Hi there, this is Mr Evans with a video on the uses and limitations of income elasticity of demand. Oop. So, um, just uh, covered the this uh, all of this section here, now looking at the value of the concept of income elasticity of demand to marketing decision makers. So just a quick reminder, income elasticity of demand examines uh, the impact of a change in income, represented here by the Y, on the change in quantity demanded. So as incomes change, how responsive are consumers to changes in income? As incomes go up, will consumers respond by um, changing their consumption patterns? Um, and income elasticity demand considers that. Remember, there are three different types of goods. If there's a negative relationship between income and demand, in other words, as incomes go up, demand goes down, or as incomes go down, demand goes up, and they would be known as inferior goods. Goods that have a positive relationship, i.e. as incomes go up, demand for these goods go up, um, but a weak uh, relationship between them, in other words, as income go up, demand doesn't go up very much. These are necessity goods. Luxury goods are goods that respond strongly to changes in income. So a 10% change in income might lead to a 20% change in demand. So they're the three types of goods you need to be aware of. So what would a business actually use income elasticity of demand to do? Well, the main thing is to predict how the sales of that business will respond if there are changes in the economy. Um, incomes are a reflection of uh, the uh, strength of an economy. As an economy gets stronger, incomes tend to rise as well. So a business uh, looking at a rosy economic picture for the future, i.e. income's going to go up, will um, want to have... Uh, um, a luxury product that as people's incomes go up they will start consuming more of um, and it will help them analyse what will happen if their product is inferior. So um, it will allow them to set targets in a boom or a recession um, for their uh, for the amount of sales that they hope to achieve. Um, it helps a business to manage their product portfolio and spread risk. So for example if, if the economy is doing really well at the moment and the business is selling a luxury good, then great, people's incomes are going up, demand for the product is going up. But um, if the, uh, the economy tends to move in cycles, so after the economy goes well, the economy may well uh, start going not so well. And is the business equipped with its product portfolio to deal with that? Does a business have an inferior good that consumers to, can switch to if their demand full, if, if their income's full, or will consumers, if their income's full, be switching to another um, uh, company's product? Just because it's called an inferior product doesn't mean we don't want one. Um, in the case of uh, incomes falling, it would be very useful for a business to have an inferior product for consumers to switch to. So the business can manage their product portfolio, they can look at what they're selling, and the business may decide that they wouldn't want to um, that they want to have a, a range of products. Um, and it may identify the need to transform brand image through promotional spending. For example, if the economy um, is predicted to uh, start improving rapidly, a business might want to conduct promotional spending in order to change its brand image, give the product a more of a luxury um, feel to it, so consumers will consume more of it if their incomes rise. So, lots of uses of income elasticity of demand. What are the limitations of it? Well, very similar to price elasticity of demand, it's going to be difficult to calculate accurately. Very difficult to use past data, i.e. incomes on average in the country increase by this much, while demand for our product changed by this much. Okay, well that was the past, and uh, your business may be based in a certain geographical area. Have you got accurate information for how much uh, people's incomes changed in that area. So it's very difficult to calculate accurately. Um, it's based on information in the past, which may not be accurate today, and it assumes that all other factors remain the same. Maybe at the time when incomes 
increase in the past and demand for your product went up a lot. Maybe there weren't many competitors at that time and there are more now. Um, maybe your brand image has changed in that time. Okay, lots of factors can change and um, uh, the calculation might ne not necessarily take that into account. Um, income elasticity of demand calculations could be based on survey results. All right, so uh, you know, asking consumers if you're, what do you think you'd be spending money on if your income goes up by 10%? Um, that might not actually uh, prove accurate in reality. Finally, um, you know, if you're using income elasticity of demand to make decisions, you're expecting incomes to rise in the near future, so you're spending a lot of money on uh, creating a luxury product that you believe customers will switch to. Well, unfortunately, um, you're relying on accurate economic forecasting, which is notoriously difficult to do. Um, and, you know, most financial experts did not see the biggest financial incident or economic incident of the last uh, 80 years or so happening uh, at the time of the great financial crisis of 2008 that was just unforeseen. So if you'd have been basing your product portfolio decision uh, based on economic forecasting at that time, you would possibly have made some incorrect decisions um, when uh, incomes were about to fall. So. Um, these are things that you could mention in an exam. If you're given an income elasticity demand value, you could say things like, well, you know, this indicates uh, that the uh, business has got an inferior product at the moment and incomes are predicted to rise, therefore they should invest in creating a luxury product. However, um, economic forecasting is difficult and the um, Income elasticity of demand figure is based on past data which may not be accurate today.